Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Kyra LaShawn, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Soul Tribe. Right now, we have this gentleman right here, and I'm going to allow him to introduce himself to you. Tell me who you are. It's your boy, Music Boy Trap, Screen Nation Network, you know what I'm saying? Hey, this is what we do. I'm from Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? Birthday, November 11th, shit. Let's turn up, man. All right, Big Scorpio Big energy. Big Scorpio yeah. in here. <laughs> Already. Okay, let's start it off with the first question. Coming from Arkansas, uh, starting out, tell me what you were influenced music-wise. Who was your influences? Uh, starting out early in the beginning, because mm -hmm. uh, I've been I've been really doing this since like I was nine years old. So like Dre and Manny Fresh was like automatically my top two beat makers. Okay. And you know so for I made, production. Yeah, for the production. I make beats as well. Okay. I make all my own beats, do all my own recording. Oh, so you were artist, yeah, artist. Yeah, I'm artist, artist. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's real, real. real. It all, like you know what I'm saying? I own the okay. label, but yeah. I'm, I'm an artist in 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 a, in a, in a, in a musician before everything. Gotcha. So, with uh, those being your favorite producers, who lyrically inspired you? Uh, you know, off top pop, you know, mm -hmm. two, five, one. Um, my mom, she put me on Dayton Family way right back when we was young. Shouts out Dayton Family. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Wow, that's I grew up on that while everybody else is listening to other stuff. You know, I'm listening to Dayton Family. How two, about like A-Bar, MJG? A-Bar, MJG. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Too Short. Uh, I got Oakland, California. Yeah, yeah. So you were cross country inspired by all music. Everything. From all you know those. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because okay. we've watched something. We, hey, man, we, who was your local artist in Arkansas that coming up that was doing it big? Because what city are you from in Arkansas? I'm from Texas County. I'm from Texas County. It's like no. three hours away. That's the connection Dallas. between Texas and Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> It's Yo. about three hours away from Dallas, about three hours away from Little Rock. So we like right up in the middle if you're going from Dallas to Little Rock. We would be okay. in the middle. Uh, coming out of, coming out of Arkansas, like locally, locally, my favorite was, you know what I'm saying, RP Iceberg. That was a cat. I was like probably wow. seven, eighth grade, and like I see it really start moving into the music scene, and he was one of the first rappers mm -hmm. that was from I see it. That was really that starting was, to build a buzz. Yeah. That I could say, hey, this guy finna go somewhere. That was one of the first guys I seen. Okay, so we are talking about the beginning, who influenced you. At what point did you decide that, you know what, I want to do this for my career or you felt like this was your purpose? Try, when did you start feeling like this is my purpose, this is something I'm about to jump ten toes into? Uh... I always felt it was my passion and that it was something I wanted to do, but I didn't really, really, really get serious about the position that I'm in now until about probably two years ago. It's far okay. as running the label. Like, I've always been an artist since nine years old. I'm going to go back to the artist part because I think that the root of where things begin is important. So when you looking at other artists perform, what made you say, you know what, it, it's... Did you? Was it a one of those situations where you wanted to be the change you wanted to see? Were you like, ah, oh, they trash. I need to get up here and do it myself. <laughs> or you was just like, uh, uh, I got something to say. I'm about to write my first rap. Did you start freestyling? Were you a lyricist? How did you begin to build to be an artist? Uh, man, I. It's crazy because a lot of it was freestyling at first at school, mm -hmm. tearing suckers up at school every day. Gotcha. Every day, that was my thing. Uh, I started getting it like I had already been making beats. I had started, we started recording. Uh, I, I was actually a gospel rapper. Me too. <laughs> I was actually a gospel rapper. <laughs> we all kind of started off in the house and, of the uh, Lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, me and my partner, we, me and my partner Justin Grissom, shout out Grissom. You know what I'm saying? That's what we did. We was uh, we was gospel rappers for our youth church and for our youth, you know, for the youth ministry. That's what's up. And it went from it just went from there. Like the older I got, the more. I got away from religion and more into spirituality. And once I got into spirituality, I just started noticing different things as far as like the law of vibration and different mm -hmm. things like that. And like as an artist, I learned that I could manipulate my reality with the stuff that I was rapping, with the stuff that I was saying. Well, you know, they say, you know, uh, life and death lives in the tongue and you can speak your you can reality. Speak. So you understood alchemy and how to transform. Yeah, yeah, yeah so uh, <laughs> you know what we talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got on the power color orange for success. Look at him. Yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, so now you've become an artist. 
And when it came to artists, you know, uh, making songs and having the passion to say what moves you, let's talk about the business. Where, you, you know, when they go from the showcases yeah. and stuff like that, I want to talk about that progression next. Yeah, like, okay, so like, I had actually, like I said, stepped away from doing doing gospel, went back to doing just circular music. Uh, I had a song at the time called Gone Off Goose. It was like one of the biggest club songs in, in our town at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just went from, on the business side, it honestly took for me to get a bad deal and not understand the business and get burnt for me to say, okay, they took all my money, they took wasted my time, I need to learn where the money coming from, who paying the money, and how do and I get how the And how do the titles these people exactly. hold you have I didn't power over your no. artistry? Yeah, you gotta learn yeah. you gotta learn you gotta learn the relationship between each person. I didn't understand that the manager worked for me and I didn't understand that I work I didn't work for the manager. I thought I worked for the manager. Cause they came and got me and was like, "Hey, we want you to be the face of this label." Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. And it, being and young, young, it sounded and good. Like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, but then I learned, like, like I said, I learned first off, never trust nothing unless it's on the paperwork. A lot of artists get burnt because they yeah. don't understand. Put it in paper. Contract. Without have that, you have no proof. The contract. Understand the wording in the contract. All of it. All of it. And it's it's not hard. It's not. Hard. I ain't gonna say it's not. It's, it's not hard. It's time consuming, but it's not hard. And people can confuse time consuming with being hard. It's just, it's not hard. It's just time consuming. It's time consuming to learn how to research how to register all your music under your name. I so the royalty checks can come to you. So you understand the importance of publishing, the importance of copywriting, the importance of you're the writer of you're this writer, content yeah. because you get paid for all those aspects. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so with that, I just, I, I learned from that bad experience and then I told myself, no, again, I'm going to learn how to set the business up. So I, I research. I research every day. I'm in books. I'm on YouTube University. <laughs> you can go to YouTube That's University right. for free. All you need is Wi-Fi connection, and bam, you in school. You can look up anything, anything you want to learn. So, like, I didn't so, let nothing stop me from getting the knowledge I needed to run my company. So, the, I, I, I'm going to say the integrity that you had in being an all-around artist got you in that, that knowledge and, the, you know, the way to learn all of the angles of what's on the chessboard so you can make the proper moves. Exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, from going from an artist, you could have continued to just been an artist, but you built your own company. You know what I mean? So you had to learn each title and what they do because you was going to be yeah. that at the end of the day. Wow. Okay, now let me talk about the, um, the things that a lot of people don't discuss. How do you deal with that when you have, like, people that are coming to you? Because when they see you starting to gain traction and everything, attitudes change. Can you explain to the Soul Tribe, you know, how do you deal when people come to you as far as, you know, how they want to do business with you? What did you learn that from your experience in running your own business, how to discern whether people are here for, you know, good things or whether they just all in the way? Research. <laughs> like, that's the number one thing. Like, people think you just supposed to research your craft. No, you got to research the people that's working in your craft. What's their credentials? What they got going on? How much movement they got going on? How much traction they making? Portfolios. If they ain't doing that, you don't want to, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have a bunch of artists coming like me. I don't want a bunch of artists coming to me thinking, for one, that I could just put them on because I own it. First off, it's going to be based off what you put in. If you don't never come to the studio and record a song, if you don't get up there and perform, if you don't do open mic events, if you don't like being in your own street team, which I don't get that because nobody can promote you better than you can promote yourself. That's you right. should always want to be your own personal street team. If you don't go do those things, I can't do nothing for you anyway. So what I look at is, I, it's not that I look at their Instagram as far as to see how many followers they got or nothing like that. I look at your Instagram and see how much content is you putting up to Are promote. You consistent? Are you consistent? I look at your, uh, your YouTube to see exactly how much is that same thing? How much content is going on? How much engagement are you actually not getting back from people, but are you engaging with the people? Because those those things right there can be built upon to make a bigger success for yourself. 
Okay. Is it safe to say that you really, it's hard to deal with talented introverts? Yes. That's, I think that's the perfect way to say yes. it, talented introverts. And, and being, being an introvert myself, like that was one of the things when I moved to Dallas, I had to get out of is I didn't like dealing with a lot of people. Then I had to train myself to, I don't have to deal with a lot of people, but I deal with the people that are beneficial to my business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of talented introverts, that's a lot of their biggest things. They they so used to doing everything themselves and everything by themselves that it's hard to get them to to switch from introvert to ambivert. That yeah, means when yeah. you in, you in. in. When you out, out. you out. Yeah, but that out has to serve a means to an end. So you can do yeah. this as a a goal or a job and stuff like that. Um, what would you tell artists that want to get signed? Uh, Things that you just, you know, know that, hey, this is the foundation. You have to do this or it's not going to work for you. Any artist that want to get signed, they want to get signed, period. To any any label, any distribution company, any publishing company, anything like that. You put your name on any contract, period. The number one thing you need to do, the first thing you need to do before you do anything else is believe in yourself. That's number one. Because if you don't believe in you, Nobody Ain't nobody else going to even give you a shot anyway. You got to believe in yourself. Number two, be consistent. Be consistent. Even when you don't have the motivation, consistency will bring the motivation back. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Number three, be very, 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 very punctual with your time. Be, be punctual with your time. Mm -hmm. Have a plan. Set out if you know you want to be. If I know, like right now, I'm going through a situation where we're trying to get a bigger deal, a, a bigger distribution deal. Right. So, I mean, I know that I got to actually plan. I had to plan this out. You know what I'm saying? Put it on paper. Put it where you can visually see it because it'll hold you accountable of it when you see it every day. Okay. But if you can't see it every day, you'll forget about it. All right. Um. Seeing as though you CEO, you have a, a lineup of artists that you're working with, and you pull up at their show. You see they on set or whatever. How can you tell them, you know, about the importance of having a lit set? I'm starting to see when I go to showcases and stuff like that, the artist will be a good artist. I can jam to their music on the expressway at 3 o'clock in the morning, but when it comes to watching them, perform live, I'm, you know, I'm just like, I wish they would give me more. Now, I'm not saying that you got to get up there and do the hammer dance or nothing like yeah. that, but I'm just saying, you know, they're not even rapping their whole song or their whole lyrics or, you know what I'm saying, yeah. the, the crowd, look, we just got to know you tonight, so I don't know all of your words. Yeah. What would you do to inspire artists everywhere to understand the importance of having a lit set? Because that is important. Uh, two pieces of advice. Two pieces of advice. One I learned when I did the BT auditions. That's what actually had me move to Dallas. Was uh, I made it to like the third round in Austin, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing that got me disqualified. Well, didn't get. I didn't end up doing the, the actual BT award show. Was they took off points because I performed over my tracks. Which had all my vocals. So for one, they as wanted an artist, you to go bare. Yeah. Yes, that show track perform is very over important. Your performance tracks. Yeah. Don't Take perform that. over the whole track. Keep your hook. Maybe some background ad libs in your verse, but you want your verses to be open to where people can hear you. He dropping jewels out. Number two, the biggest thing, because I have artists that I've had to talk to on my label about the same thing. Rehearsal. I don't know why every artist think they too big to rehearse. Beyonce gonna go rehearse for all week before she actually go perform. Jay Z gonna have rehearsals all week before he perform. Nobody Future gonna have it. rehearsals. This is the stuff you don't see. These people are exactly. superstars and they still rehearse. Exactly. Dance it's, moves with dancers. That's but and, and then and then they gonna have dress rehearsals. Where they're rehearsing in their outfits yeah. that they're going to wear for the show. And I think a lot of that is not put into the quality of artistry. Because yeah. that all comes into the quality of artistry. You see, for me, like like I said, for me, man, I was lucky that I, I grew up doing this in the church. 
So I had a, yeah Sunday morning they gonna get you right a dance instructor because I also used to mine for the church I used mm -hmm. to be a puppeteer for the church like so I did a lot of stuff that I was always in front of the congregation because I just for one I just like showmanship I just like to put on a good show right but those things early on trained me to let me see the importance of rehearsal because when you rehearse. If you if you play around in rehearsal, that's what you that's what you're gonna get when you actually do the show. But when you actually in full in full costume or in full in your full outfit or whatever, and, and you actually doing this as if you performing it right then and there, that's how they go. You know, you gotta you gotta perform and, and, and master it and really work on your show production. And I'm gonna tell you why it pays. Because booking agents, they, they do watch these that. type of things. And it dictates what they want to pay you when they're booking you. If you're an extra dry artist and you just get up there just, you know, doing a church rock, don't be mad if they be like $150. Okay? But if you're up there and you actually giving a live and a lit set, then you can negotiate your payments with the booking our agents and stuff like that. Yeah. And once that content is out there and you have a horrible show, it's hard to turn the tide sometimes. You might have to have ten more good shows, good shows to replace that the the friction of that one show where you weren't at your best. Which brings me to the next question: Have you ever had a show where you got hit with news that had you sick, but you still had to get up there and keep pushing? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're gonna talk about the, oh, yeah. the mountain yeah. highs and the valley lows in this oh, artistry. Yeah. Like, yeah, even even with my my last release, my last release party. You know, that earlier that day, I had got a phone call from a partner uh, back in, from home. One of our partners had just got, I mean, like, got shot earlier that day before my release party. And, like, this was somebody I was real close to. You know what I'm saying? He didn't die, but the fact it's that I, you know what I'm saying, he, I know he got shot. I couldn't be by his side. I couldn't support his mama. I couldn't be by her side. You know what I'm saying? Thank God, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't fatal, but... Just not being able, you know, somebody that I grew up with as a kid, not being able to be there and support them, and then I still got to go perform. Like, I had a lot of thoughts running through my mind. But then, I like I said, it's, it's almost like a switch you got to turn on. You got to be able to turn ministry. on the switch and really go into character. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'm CEO, and then sometimes I got to flip the switch and go back to being an artist. And, and that was what, some, it's like that with your emotions. Sometimes you got to be able to switch, flip that switch for just a second. I can deal with this after I take care of this business. And a lot of times that's what we got to We got to remember it's still a business. Even though it's personal to us, it's art we love, art form we love, it's still, at the end of the day, it's still a business. Um, out of your catalog, I got to listen to it. My personal favorite of music that you personally put out just now is Hell A. Man. Man, when you didn't come to play in there, your cadence was strong, your um your flow was switched up and everything. Yeah, yeah. Man, I really enjoyed that song. <laughs> that's my fave. That's one of my What's favorites. What's your fave? Oh, uh, that's one of my favorites, you know. And I mean that's recent. You know, this yeah. that new new. Yeah, that new yeah. new. Die Legend, go out streaming on all platforms, Spotify, YouTube, all that Screen Legends Network. Uh that was one of my favorites. That was one of my favorites. Um uh, my other favorite off of that one would probably be that I can say the one I listen to the most mm -hmm. would probably be one one at all. Okay. It would probably be one at all. And that, and then for me that was just, you know, Hella Hating and One at All was both wrote before I ever came to Dallas, before I Oh, so that's even. when you were hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and your stomach was sticking oh, yeah. your back for real. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was fresh coming to Dallas. Uh I had wrote them two songs and I hadn't even picked the project to even put them on yet. My daughter heard them. She was like, hey, them five. Okay. When you, when you dropping them, them five. Yeah. And then at that point, I started building around those two projects to um, finish the mixtape. From Arkansas to Dallas, what do you see this in Dallas where the atmosphere, you know, is different from back home? Because yeah. for me, <laughs> um, I've just seen like opportunity. Yeah. Like, I came down here, I, I used to call it the Wizard of Oz. You know, I was like, the Green Building is the Wiz. So, me being able to come back to Dallas, I just seen so many opportunities. I like the song where you was talking about, you ain't got time to be beefing with nobody. Yeah, you trying, you trying to get to it, you know what I mean? So, being able to network, 
come together with people, put things in alignment. I, I saw it as just a city open wide with opportunity. For us, like I'm from, like I said, I'm from Texas County. For us growing up out the door, no music, no nothing going on. It was if we can just grow up and make it to Dallas. If we can just get get grown and make it to Dallas. Mm. That was because where we from, like the stuff that I'm doing now, I could probably do it. It would take long mm -hmm. because we don't have a strong music scene. We don't have clubs that's open up every night of the week where I can do a right. my Dallas every night. Sleep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dallas don't sleep. If, if you don't make it here, it, it's because of the lack of confidence in yourself or, you lazy. or the lack of discipline to get stuff done. Because the opportunity is here. It's here. I get it, you know, and I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I, a lot of artists probably be mad at me. A lot of I don't want no Dallas artists mad. You know, I I fuck with Dallas. I want y'all to know I, I love Dallas. I hear a lot of Dallas artists come tell me, man, Trout, they don't they don't support Dallas artists. They don't, and you know that was the same thing we said back home in in my hometown. They don't support local artists that was from Texas County. That's how we felt. Like they didn't really support us the way. They would support somebody coming from Treeport, or the way they would support somebody coming from Houston, or the way they would support you know another another city. So when I got here, I ain't gonna lie, I took advantage. That was an opportunity within itself. I'm not from here, so I ain't gonna lie. They showed me love here mm -hmm. at the same places where I see a lot of Dallas artists who from here go and, and get slept on. Well, they say you know a prophet is never respected in, in his own home. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, but, but that I'm starting was one to see of the change. Yeah, now that I am. I'm starting, uh, yeah, to, see a, I'm starting a to see a change. I'm starting to see a lot of artists wake up. Because that's one of my things is I tell artists all the time, man. Invest in yourself. Uh, Don't wait on the promoter. Who's promoter. some of your uh, cool uh, artists from Dallas that you really go with? Because I'm going to tell you all the time, I'm a 52 Savage fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm a 52 Savage <laughs> fan. Uh, from the, the time he first came out with Pressure to the Snoop Dogg remix, I have followed this man. I feel like, you know, Dallas really need to give him his flowers. For real. Um, Savage. And I, you know, I listen to Mo three. Yeah. Um, there's so many. It's a, a couple of them, but Savage is at the top, and I, and he's at the top for me because he has the life experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's lived long enough. You know, where decades where some people might discredit him for being older. I credit you for being older because you have outlived to see a lot of the bad programs that others have fell traps in. So yeah, fifty two Marco. Yo, uh oh. Coming up, growing up, you know, we listen to a lot of DSR, Tom Tom, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of them guys. Uh, like, once I got to Dallas and, like, now being older, like, now on the scene, a couple guys is getting high. Uh, Mo3, I was always, you know, when he came out, I was three. Of course, Yellow Bees and Trap Boy Freddy. But, like, guys that are not really at that point yet, Room Music, which... He's actually from Louisiana, but he's doing, he's taking off, starting to take off on the Dallas scene. Uh, let me see. For me, I am Dino. No Shame, J. Jizz. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your R&B, J. Jizz. Uh, no Shame. J. Uh, Waiters. He's another R&B single from here that's, that's doing his thing. He, he, he's doing his thing. He, he even got stuff going all out in Atlanta. Hey, oh, man. Like I said, shout out. Like I said, shout out. Because it's a Dino. lot of talent in Dallas. It it's is. It's a lot of talent in Dallas. Not just singing and rapping. I'm talking about dancing. dancing it's a whole culture. Poetry, and I can appreciate that. Man. Poetry, live jazz, all of that. Everything, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a smorgasbord down here when it comes to talent. And just understanding the business of if this is your thing, if this is what you want to do, the passion, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mature you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. for you to be at this age now where you're a CIA and you're young. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You did, the, you know, I think you was like on a quick study program because you got, you know, where you are in your eyes. It might have took forever, yeah. but coming from my eyes, which is older eyes, fairly quickly. Yeah. Like, I, like I said, it just, it came with life experiences for one. Just, you know, learning that in this music game, it is a game. People will use you. People will, if you don't understand what's going on, they're going to take advantage of it. And once I, parallel street life. Yeah. Uh, once I understood that, man, I was just like, you know, 
you got research. You got in order to be in this game, you got to know what you're up against. You got to, but like I said, most importantly, you got to research. You got to research the game from all aspects. Okay. What happens when you know you kind of need a break from being a CEO, or artist, and and music and other things? What other passions do you have outside of music? Oh man, I love to cook. All the women out here watching, I love to cook. I got you. <laughs> all that trap. I got you. What is you cooking, trap? Oh, I'm cooking. Then what you want? <laughs> what you want? Shout out my mama. Shout out my great auntie. They taught a boy how to get down in the kitchen. They okay. Talking about you want greens hey. and neck bones? I got that. You want reels? I just I need got a power that. plate. You know what I'm talking about? What's the power plate consist of? Let me see. Right now, my favorite. Uh, well, I ain't gonna say my favorite. Everybody else's favorite that took off when I when I got up here and really started cooking uh, was the ribs. Okay. Like, like people say my ribs is fire, my baked beans is fire. I, I went on your page and I seen all them <laughs> uh, brisket pictures. <laughs> <laughs> the brisket fire, okay. you know. Uh, especially the brisket boy. We do the nachos out the brisket. We'll take the brisket, oh, make brisket yeah. tacos. Okay, uh, so uh, what can we catch you, gingerbread man? Look. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm actually I'm actually on hold right now because That's I'm cool. in the middle of dropping another project. But uh, we are me and Fox are uh, in the process of getting ready to do my own cooking show. Okay. So that's what we're working on. That's cool. Is uh, the cooking show? But outside of cooking, man, I fish. So uh, when you do have place available. For sale, you know, you will put it on your oh, IG. Yeah. It's on my IG. You can follow me at, at Traps Official Kitchen. You know what I'm saying? We got all we got all the plates. I'm gonna make sure before I before we even sell a plate, we we go ahead and put the uh, fly out that week. Let you know what to expect, what what you can yeah. get. Some weeks I do multiple dishes. Some weeks I do the same dish. You do what you feel. Yeah, uh, just depending on you know what the people want. Because if I get a bunch of requests for the ribs. That I'm gonna do ribs, you know, probably that Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But like, if it's a week that I really don't have a request for ribs, and I can play around with my play around with my menu, mm -hmm. man, you like to get some chicken, bacon, ranch quesadillas come I out think of that's, the, that's really cool. That you know, sometimes you do get a little. I'm not gonna say burnt out, but you just need a break. Yeah. So you give yourself a little safe stocks that distribute your gifts. So, um, just on a, a note, what's What's for the future that you want? You know, if you can know that you're telling the crowd, this is the future that I'm manifesting. This is what I want. What's the future for you, Trap? Grow the label. Like, uh, not only as the label, but we also operate, like I said, as a networking company. The cooking show is just one project. We are leaning into actually going into TV shows and movies. We also want to do some... Uh, Bring in some models, start bringing in supporting models, helping them get endorsement deals, helping them get clothing designs. You know what I'm saying? That's what and bringing it on back. Yeah, that's we want to go into a full net. You know, just to grow the networking company and see everybody be successful. All the artists on every artist that I sign, you know, I make sure that they understand not only the game, but like I teach them what's going on, but I make sure they understand. The importance of owning their masters, the importance of owning, you know what I'm saying? Like when when they sign with me, we do a 60-40 on the masters. That way I'm not taking all your masters, I'm not taking all your publishing. Now I'm gonna get paid for the work I'm doing. Right. But I'm you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna make I want you to understand ownership. I want you to own some of this. And every like if you was to sign to me today and we did a one I do a lot of my contracts under one project. Mm -hmm. That way you have freedom to come in and learn what you want to learn. And then if you want to go do something else, you're not tied to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I really want to be just a stepping stone for your career. You know what I'm saying? I want to teach you how to register your music and collect your royalties. I want to teach you how to do all this stuff if you want to learn. If now, you there are learn. artists out there that don't want to do none of that. They just want to be artists, and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a spot for them. And I make sure you get the best deals. I make sure that... If you was to say, okay, you know, I'm done with my, my contract, I don't make people wait. If, if you want to buy back your masters and own them fully, hey, we ain't <laughs> tripping off here. Big brain say, little man, you know we. Let's go. I got you. I want, because I want, as an artist, I always want the artist to understand the importance of ownership because I didn't understand none of that. And then just to trip back on the uh, soul charge too, 
I understand the importance of evolution. So going back to the beginning of this interview when you were talking about things that influenced you as a young man, where you were in your middle years being an artist, coming into being a business owner, um, you got to have a strong soul to get to that point. Oh, yeah. And just uh, if you want to give us some tips and inspire the tribe on things that, you know, you keep in your spirit to uplift you, to keep you motivated in here, the divine is in trap. To keep you on the straight and narrow, to keep you off the trenches from things that so many people that fell off along the line. What would you tell the tribe? Uh, to really just stay, to stay with it and stay focused. You know what I'm saying? Where everybody, like, cause I, when I started, all my partners was rappers. All my friends was rappers. I'm not you know, just talking about that. I'm talking about, yeah, everybody rapping and stuff like that. But I'm talking about the peer pressure. The oh, hey man, man, try this. Hey, we smoking this. Hey, snort that. Hey, man, that. these hoes is here. Hey, she'll do anything for anybody, giving everybody uh, STDs. You know, yeah. how did you keep yourself preserved? Easy. Kept you life. in your right mind, kept you from falling off. I, you myself, know. I, I knew who I was. That, that's, that's, the, that's the number one thing in life, period, is you have to spend time with yourself and learn who you are. So learn, man. learn who you are as a person, as a you know what I'm saying, as an artist, cool. But like as a person, really spend time knowing and find out who you are. Meditate. You know what I'm saying. A lot of people be like meditate. Nah, spend man, like really yourself, meditate. Sit there and be quiet and just listen to your inner thoughts. What does that do for you? It give me a peace of mind. It give me like when I get up in the morning before I, before I do anything else. I get up brush my teeth, I wash my face. Before I do anything else, before I check the social media, before I do anything else, I take 10 minutes and I meditate and I say affirmations to start my day. Because once you get going in the right direction, it's a whole lot easier to continue going in the right direction. That's right. So when you get up in the morning, like, that's number one, is I, is I meditate. I spend time with myself. Number two, man, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Everything ain't for everybody. You got to be honest with yourself. I'm not going to get it. I don't. I got partners who get toe up drunk. That ain't my thing. Like, I'm not going to get that slap job. I might have a zip too with you. That, that ain't my thing. So, like, other people coming to try to peer pressure me and stuff. Like, I know I'm so comfortable in, in my own skin and who I am. I don't care what nobody else thinks no of me. So, I don't have to. That's not my thing. Nah. This ain't that. And I don't care what you think about it. You validate yourself. I, I, I am who I am. I don't, I don't worry he about nobody. He validates himself. He don't look for nobody to nah, validate man. him. He validates his own self. And that right there is really important. When can't nobody tell you who you are because you spend time with yourself and you exactly. recognize who you are and you recognize the divine within you that you are your God's own unique fingerprint coming through, moving through you, that is major. Nobody validates something but him, and I'm so glad you shared that with the that's, tribe. That's the number one thing, as far like I said, in just finding your higher self. Is once you once you get on that journey to find your higher self, you get so comfortable. Once you realize who you are and what you're capable of, it don't matter what nobody else thinks, because you know. I think it changes your your artistry because. You don't. You have rappers, and rappers is cool. Mm -hmm. You have lyricists, people who write out what they think. But then you got MCs, you got masters in ceremony. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's hard. And that, that's job. that's hard right there. <laughs> when they come up and they grab the microphone and they speaking in the whole room, time just stop, and you yeah. get jewels of rhythm. That's what I like. You know, that's that that king energy, and I, it's so good to see the masculine divine come back and. and, and Feel this space now, cause for a, a minute you had drug dealer music, then you yeah. had drug door music. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing that I like with your content matter is is expanding to push beyond just the the basic matrix of these bad programs that's yeah. been put upon our culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. You telling people build something, have that's something, something own something. You know. That's that's my whole man. That's my whole message point. You know my. My mission statement for my label, my you know, our mission statement is to die a legend. Mm. Fear forever eat aggressively regardless of any situation. Forever eat, eat aggressively, aggressively regardless, regardless. That's of not, any situation. That's dope. 
You know what I'm saying? Like that that's our mission, that's our mission statement. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how we move, that's where we live. We're gonna forever eat aggressively regardless, and we're gonna die legends. You know what I'm saying? Like the average person look at me and they will see a thug with tattoos in his face and this, that, and the other. But if they really get to know and, talk, with and talk to me, a lot I hear it all the time. I got a lot of people when they talk to me, they're like, man, we didn't even know you was on that type, especially when I get to talk about spirituality. In, in, in that type of things and start talking about the law of attraction and the law of vibration. How do you think that and, that ties right now into hip hop? Because a lot of people are lost right now. So that's it seems like spirituality is something that kept you really grounded oh, along the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it just like I said, it, it helped me find me. It helped me discipline myself. And also. preserve yourself. And preserve yeah. <laughs> and preserve myself. It, it's just that that's the move. That that to me, that's the move, man. Anybody trying to make a power move, that that's the power move. Hey. Is to learn who you are and, and and take that spiritual journey and really dive all the way in it and, and engulf yourself in it. And with me, you know, uh, I think like for me, it's important because even when I transcend this planet, I want to be able for it to be said that my energy was a hundred grand in the hand. I'm Yo. stamped. You know, you got good energy from me, and it's memorable, and it'll go down through my descendants. I might not be a mother, but I'm a mother of all I touch, all I nurture. Hey. So, you know, I set it up like that. So, hey, man, that is strong. Um, I want to give a shout out to my soul sister, Lyrica Fox, you know, because hey. she made a, a, a sacrifice that many people don't. She's a mother first. And she's making sure that, you know what I'm saying, her, her baby's all right. So we're going to send her peace, love, energy, healing energy. And also, thank you for sending this guy. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's been an amazing interview. Shout out, folks. I really appreciate you for coming. I really appreciate you for just having a, a meaningful interview that we just pulled out the fly. Yeah, you know, man. none of this was scripted. None of this was thought out. And I really appreciate you. Uh sharing your currency and time with the tribe. Man, I appreciate y'all yeah. having me. I appreciate having the opportunity to even drop some jewels Definitely. on other artists, other aspiring CEOs. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's always a blessing to be able to give back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Reciprocity. Give back to those who give to you. Exactly. Um do you want to shout out any of your mentors, any of the special people in your life that just keep you up there? Uh first off I wanna shout out the whole game. Anybody who, who rock with Screen Legends Network, you know what I'm saying? All the fans, all the family members, you know what I'm saying? All the friends who supported me. Fox, Lyrical Fox out the door, you know, she came in as man, my manager. Grand in the hey, you hear me? Step up as my, uh, she's also the vice president of Screen Legends Network. She came in, like, she keep me on my on my PCQs. If I'm slacking somewhere, she hold me accountable. If she's slacking somewhere, I hold her accountable and, and we bounce that energy back. And forth. Iron sharp as iron. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my mentor Don P. You know what I'm saying? He hooked me up, uh, you know what I'm saying, with Black Eagle Atlanta. I went down there. Shout out Rich Mo. You know, it's just a lot of people that that really contribute to what I got going on that mm -hmm. I, I really salute them because they didn't have to do it. You know what I'm saying? Don P didn't never have to talk to me. This guy worked 20 years at Def Jam. Gotcha. He never had to say, hey, here go my personal number. Not not a social media, but my personal number if you need anything. Call me. Gotcha. You know, them type of people in your comedy is about building relationships and networking with these people. Well, when you, you attract the frequency you want. Exactly. So it's good to see that you came across my frequency. Yeah. She was like, I know I can't make the interview, but I want to send him. And I was like, I, don't, I, I knew of you, yeah. but I spent the whole afternoon reviewing your content, kind of picking up on, you yeah. know, from my perspective, what it would be. And I am like, above and beyond happy you know what i mean because i had no idea that you would sit here and you would kick it like this and kick it for the tribe like that oh. hey man soul charge up uh, so, so really that ain't you. you know it's up. it's up i, I yeah. salute y'all man keep going mm -hmm. keep doing y'all thing tell them hey y'all keep tuning in y'all y'all keep supporting them y'all keep supporting her hey it, it is what it is man it, it's number good energy over here good people Give them your uh, YouTube, your IG, places where they can catch up with you online and, and, and find, you know, you and what you got going on. Okay. Uh, Music Boy Trap, you know, you can follow me at Music Boy underscore Trap on IG. 
You can follow me at Screen Legends Network LLC on IG. You can also follow me at Screen Legends Network on YouTube. Uh, Die Legend. You know what I'm saying? It's on Spotify. It's on all platforms. Make sure y'all stream that. Check that out. We do got new music getting ready to drop. We got new, a whole new content campaign come getting ready to. We getting ready to pro push and promote. Uh, Cooking with Trap TV show getting ready to come out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you that. You know what I'm saying? I will be. You can follow me on, on any of my mm. platforms to just keep in touch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, any any artist looking for beats, you can follow me at Trap underscore beat. Uh, Trap underscore official beat store. You know what I'm saying? I got beats. You know what I'm saying? And on the beats right now, we're running a special, a hundred dollars with the track outs, all exclusive rights. I sell all my beats with exclusive rights. I don't do no leasing, no beats. I want y'all yes. to understand ownership on the beats. I'm tired of seeing a lot of artists not be getting credit or the money that they need to go to move forward because they use using YouTube beats. Yeah. Or other beats that they don't because have. Because when rights. they go to a real studios, they, they're not even that accepting it. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Need beats. Trap underscore official beats, though. You know what I'm saying? But that's the whole movement. I appreciate everybody who rocking with you, man. Hey, I appreciate having you here. Um, before I go, I definitely want to give a shout out to Wildlife Studios. Um, thank you for just continuing to encourage me, continuing to be, you know, a good bro. Dallas View, thank you for yes. another great show and being here, showing up and showing out again. Couldn't do it without you. And thank y'all so tried each and every last one of y'all who locked in with us, you know. And uh, just following us on the journey, man. And uh, go back, review, because this man dropped some jewels. He said some things that I'm sure I want y'all to take time to marinate on. Don't judge a book by its cover, 100.